Welcome everyone to the Ask Oki podcast. Coming to you from Studio One, my name's Peter, and I have as my guest here, Oki, otherwise known as the Prof. We're privileged to be in arguably the world's largest walk-in man's closet. And there are parts, obviously, of Studio One that you've seen from previous videos, but there are whole other parts of Studio One that I'm afraid you'll never get to see. Oki and I, obviously, are privileged to be able not only to see, but to walk around in Studio One. This evening, we're all about talking about the Prof's interesting outfit, which we'll get into in a moment. And then we'll talk about cotton, cotton suits, cotton jackets, cotton trousers, because it's the summertime. And then we'll finish up with shirts, particularly Ask Oki's line of bespoke shirts. So, Prof. I think we can't possibly continue without <laughs> remarking on the outfit. Now, as you know, we always start with the prof's outfit, and as you all will know, I always remark on the contrast between the prof and myself. It's not only a matter of age, the prof radiates youth, vigor. I ceased radiating pretty well anything several years ago, um, but we have an interesting color, an interesting fabric. So let's find out a little bit about this, Prof. Well, you know, Pete, you do have a way with words. Thank you. And, thank um, you. I have to tell you. I Pete, do my best. I have to tell you, um, I have absolutely no idea how you keep a straight face. <laughs> well, it's the only <laughs> sort of face I have, actually. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, thank welcome. you for the very. Uh, generous uh, and kind introduction. Pleasure. Um, Pleasure. What am I wearing? Uh, yes. What specifically was your question? Well, it wasn't a question so much, but I would like to draw the attention of our, of our dear viewers. It's, what would you call the color? Heather? I, lavender? I called it lavender. That's lavender. the first color that came to mind when I saw the bolt of cloth. Okay, now where did you get this one? I got this from Yugman Neff, which is a, oh, in a, Vienna. In yes, Vienna. Yes, yes, it's yes. a specialty cloth yes. store. Uh, my good friend George, uh, mm. who's the owner, uh, the store's been in the family for many years, actually, for generations. I think George might be the third generation owner, and it's been in that location for that long. Wow. Uh, it's been in that location right off of Katna Strasse, uh in the first district in Vienna. Uh, so it is quite a, it is quite a, um, a location, quite a, a cathedral, mm. if you're someone who's um, into uh, fabric. So yes, I did, I did find this bolt. Uh, it caught my eye right away, and uh, uh, or rather, George pulled me to the back of the store. He says, "Okay, <laughs> I have something you yes, would love yes, to see," yes, and. Yes. He didn't disappoint. Right. And so what is it? Is it is it flannel or this tweed is or? this is what I would call a summer tweed. Right. Right. So it's it's a, it's a tweed, of course, uh, but it's very porous. Mm -hmm. right? It's very porous. So it's not uh, it's not as densely woven. I would say it comes close to being a Shetland. Right. So if you right. if you know the structure of various tweeds, you mm -hmm. have Shetland, you have, you know, Gamekeeper tweed, you have Cheviots and so on and so forth. They stay tweeds. Shetlands tend to be the most porous, the way it's woven. Right. And so uh, this is woven very openly, perhaps even more so than a cheviot, uh, which is why I happen to be wearing it at the tail end of summer. Yeah. Because yeah. it is not as, um, it is not as uh, warm wearing as uh, other tweeds might otherwise be. It's almost like a Donegal in the way that it has little... The weave flex, doesn't it? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. But but so are most tweeds, and that is the beauty right. of tweed, right. isn't it? Yes. Uh, beauty of tweed. Again, I I would uh, I put up a disclaimer. I'm not a cloth technician, but the beauty about tweeds uh, tweeds are the this ability to take different colors, mm -hmm. different colored yarns, yes. and yes. weave it into one cloth and produce mm -hmm. one cloth. So. If you look at any tweed, right, especially like you mentioned, Donegal's and some mm -hmm. other tweeds, uh, it's a combination of so many different yarns. Right. And right. so you see this beautiful variegated color. Yes, you do. Uh, from a distance, it looks like a certain color. But on closer inspection, you see 
flecks of different colors you certainly in it. Do, and, yes. and that is the that is the magic of tweed well it's got a lot of red and a lot of blue in it actually and as you said when you get a close up look you've got little bits of gray light blue darker blue and so forth Correct. so it it's it's quite a cloth actually it is. and i can imagine also people maybe getting something similar in a bluish gray or a greenish blue or something I'm yes sure. absolutely and it takes uh, quite a bit of confidence to wear this as indeed, you might indeed. imagine <laughs> the, the prof wears what most of you don't even dare to think about so if you've ever as they would say in new york chutzpah right indeed indeed so if you've ever fancied yourself in a heather suit you don't want to get one in plain heather correct um, you don't want to get a you know, heather mohair or something. You want to get something with some texture to it, just like what the prof has on now. Correct. And you'll notice also, and I think this is, uh, I'm going to ask Oki in a minute about this. You don't want to wear anything with it that goes over the top, shall we say. Correct. So I notice, for example, you've got dark socks, dark shoes and a fairly subdued tie correct correct and and the idea pete is all about balance you know we're moving away from tailoring and moving uh, into styling so right, to speak right, right. and the thing uh, i always highlight when you are styling your outfit is that you have to seek balance all yep. the time yeah you have to seek balance and so if you're wearing say a dull gray suit or mm -hmm. dull navy suit um, you have some latitude in terms of accenting it, right, your accessories. Right. Uh, you can use, you can employ a bit more color, mm -hmm, uh, a bit mm -hmm. more, you can take a bit more artistic license in accessorizing the outfit. Whereas when you have uh, a suit such as I have on, which in your own words could frighten the horses. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say it would frighten them, but it might certainly wake them up. Okay, it might certainly yeah, when you when up. you have a suit that could yeah, frighten yeah, the yeah. horses, yes. uh, you generally want to sort of maintain that balance by keeping everything else subdued. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, I have on here uh, a very very faint pink shirt, yes. and one might ask why I haven't gone for a white shirt. Yeah, because white would be neutral. But I find that with a suit like this, white would provide too much contrast. Yes. And so I found that a very, very low or lightly saturated pink, which mm -hmm. is in the same color family as a lavender, yep. it allows you to capture that contrast mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. being too stark. So from a distance, of course, yeah. it looks like I'm wearing a white shirt. It does. Yeah. But when you come closer, and even from a distance, the contrast is not so stark. No. And a lot of these things beat come with, uh, I would say, a trained eye or of experience. Course, yes. So I do, of course, have white shirts in my wardrobe. But I looked at the suit and I knew right away, even before I picked out a shirt, that a white shirt would provide, that the contrast would be too stark. Yes, yes, and so yes. I've gone for something, uh, something like a light pink to sort of bring down the lavender mm -hmm. very softly. And the tie, of course, is, again, something... It's, a, it's sort of a burgundy tie with, with, with white stripes. Mm -hmm. Now, one might ask why I haven't gone for, say, a navy tie or a darker yes, tie. Yes. Again, the thing about wearing things like this is that you have to think balance, contrast, and, and subtle transition. Yep. Very subtle transition. If I had on a dark tie such as you had right, on, right, right. the transition would be too stark. Yeah, okay. The contrast would be too stark between yeah. everything else and it would stick out like a soft yes, thumb. Yes. Again, we want to keep the suit the star of the occasion. Right. right. And so we want to avoid having anything that competes for attention with it. So even if you went with a navy tie, which is as boring as they get, mm -hmm. no pun intended. No, 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 it is, it is. Um, because of the sharp contrast, it, it sticks out right away and the eye starts to really struggle mm -hmm. uh, whether to focus on the suit or yeah, on the tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea again is to keep everything rather subdued so that the eye can appreciate the cloth yes. or the fabric um, yes. and the cut of course. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
having that texture to it mutes what other might, otherwise might be a bit of a shock to the eye from the color, doesn't it? it it's not a sharp lavender, no, as you can no, see. No. It's not a very sharp lavender. No, it's it's not, a no. cool, it's actually it's sort of it's an icy color. Yes, yes. And so uh, a, a, a true, it's not pink. No, a pink no. suit would be jarring mm -hmm. in comparison. Mm -hmm. So with the tweed, with the blue yarns and the gray and all of that, what that does is that it basically sort of it neutralizes to some degree the sharpness of the lavender. Definitely, definitely. So of course the overall it looks like lavender, but it doesn't it's not that it's not jarring to the yeah. eye because of all the other neutral colored yarns that have been infused in mm. the cloth itself. Indeed. So some interesting lessons here everybody. The suit is the star of the show in, in this particular case. Therefore the shirt is muted, the tie is muted, and we've got dark shoes and dark socks so as not to be too bright or too busy looking. Interesting. It's an acquired science, an acquired art. Well, there is, um, what do they call it, the color wheel, isn't there? I, I've never studied those, actually. I never, no. I mean, I know what they are, but I think a lot of when it comes to styling, uh, you have to, it, it takes a lot of, um, as you would know, uh, it just takes a lot of experience. Yeah. You know, after a while, you sort of develop a sixth sense for what works in terms of combining colors. Oh, yes, yes. And so I, I don't refer, I know there are those who swear by them, but I've never, um, never deferred actually to a color wheel my entire life. No, I first saw one in a, it was an old catalog from Hickey Freeman or somebody like that who published in his catalog this color wheel. And you could choose from all of the shirts and the trousers and the jackets and so forth. You could choose different combinations of colors. Mm -hmm. And it would guide you which ones you ought to choose to put together. But uh, it's, it's, worth, it's worth thinking about because obviously the overall effect is a combination of the colors and the textures. Correct. of each of each item in the garment. Now, you mentioned shirts, and we need to come back to that. But before we talk about shirts, let's, I want the audience to take a look at one of these. Since it's the summer, something that you may not know a lot about, I didn't until um, I got interested in all this, which was the cotton suit. And we've got an example here. It's an Askoki cotton suit. It's a two button. And it's an office suit. It's an office, actually, office a suit. cotton office suit. And it weighs, well, I wouldn't like to hazard, but probably weighs about eight pounds. It's a good chunk. It's a good weight. <laughs> it certainly is. We're not, we're not talking about shirt cotton here. We're talking about what is this? Brush brushed cotton. Brushed cotton. It's brushed cotton. So is that the same as what they make chinos out of? Or This is a bit lighter. So I would give you, for example, our chinos we make from um, with my, at least my favorite. Um, of course, the customers are, are welcome to choose whatever fabric they prefer. But I like my chinos done, done in Harrison's Messolaire. And right, uh, right. the Messolet cotton weighs about 550 grams. We've got a pair up there, and we're going to look at them in due right. course. Right, absolutely. Yes. That's Messolet. Um, it weighs about 550 grams. It is very sturdy. It is real heavy drill, what they call drill cotton. This is not drill cotton. No, this is no. lighter. I mean, you could tell when you yes. look at these, you could tell the difference. Yes. That's a much heavier. Uh, this has got to be sort of something in the 300s, I would reckon. Right, right. Uh, 310. Actually, this is, I believe, from an Italian mill, believe it or not. Huh? And I got it also from uh, Jungman Neff. But it is, um, so it is 12 a twill. ounces or 11 or 12 I would ounces. reckon about 11 to 12 ounces. And it's a um, twill weave. It's a twill weave, absolutely. Yes. Brushed cotton. Yes. And some people swear by cotton suits. Other people don't think the cotton is suitable. So can you tell us a bit about how you got the idea 
particularly for an office suit yes in cotton well cotton is notorious for lacking drape yep and so if you're building up a suit wardrobe i mean a lot of people want to get a bang for their buck they mm. want to mm. get the most for their value for their money and i i certainly wouldn't start with a cotton suit because one it doesn't drape it doesn't hold shape yeah. So if you if you're going bespoke, one of the things you want you want it to stand out. You yeah, want the yeah. you want the, you want the suit to look like a handmade garment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that is very difficult to achieve with cotton, just because the cloth itself, the innate yeah, yeah. character, innate properties of the cloth, uh, don't allow it to drape well. No, 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 no. So uh, unless you have an extensive wardrobe or you've covered all the other bases, I would certainly not recommend cotton as your mm -hmm. first. Yes. Uh, bespoke suit. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, if you're properly kitted out or say, for instance, you live in a warm climate uh, and that's even no excuse because in a warm climate, you still have linen, you have fresco and tropical wools and yep. so on and so forth that hold shape better than yep. cotton. But, you know, cotton has sort of a, a rugged charm to it. Yes. And so uh, you look a bit like a country lawyer. Uh, right, right, on a, on a right. Friday, I, I call this my Friday suit. Friday so suit, yes. On a Friday, uh, you want to look a bit more relaxed, uh, certainly not disheveled or, mm -hmm. or slovenly mm -hmm. by any mm -hmm. measure. But um, there's something the French call the gage or the gage. I'm right, pronouncing right. it right. Uh, Italians call it spezzatura. Oh, right. Yes. And yes. you want to give this appearance of sort of not being overly put together yes. or overly prepared. Yes. So yes. cotton is one of those fabrics that allows mm. you to do that, uh, to look tailored, uh, but not um, overly... Uh, not dressed up. Dressed up, absolutely. Now, it almost um, might make a good traveling suit. Well, traveling, if you don't care for uh, it looking rumpled. No, what I mean is because you could, with cotton, because you're not worried about it looking smart. You can fold it up, put it in the overhead baggage uh, box, absolutely, and then pull it down and put it on when you. Uh, as long as you don't care about looking well pressed when you get yeah, off indeed. the aircraft. Well, it's very difficult unless you're traveling first class or business class. It's almost impossible not to look disheveled when you come off an airplane, simply because you know you've been sitting there for eight hours or something in the Correct. same clothes. Correct. But it's um, it's. And this is the jacket part of the, the suit. Um, just one question, by the way, not related to cotton. These buttonholes Correct. that Askoki makes, are these what you call Milanese? Well, you know, frankly, I think those terms are whatever they are. Uh, these are handmade buttonholes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how the Milanese uh, somehow co-opted some method of buttonhole making and, and sort of made it their own, I have no idea. Uh, but these are handmade, um, yes, handmade buttonholes yes. and any bespoke tailor or any bespoke shop for that matter will have your buttonholes handmade. So mm -hmm. we were just having this conversation in my library prior to oh, right. this, yes, uh, yes. In this uh, podcast about um, tailors uh, creating some kind of... Uh, uh, can I say, how can I say this, creating an, 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 uh, an illusion, well, not really an illusion, but just sort of a sense a, of mystery, a, a, a sense of yes, mystery sense, around sense of mystery, what yes, they do. Yes, yes. And so things like uh, the Milanese buttonhole and, and Neapolitan shoulder, I mean, mm -hmm. some of those are functional, but a lot of them are just marketing, yes. Um, yes. what I consider marketing. Um, Indeed, fluff. fluff. Now, we sp you spoke about cotton drill. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cotton's answer to uh, a suit of armor. In fact, the way the waistband's been done, I mean, you, you, you can't even really fold Correct. the waistband. It's, and the material, well, this weighs a good five pounds. That's 550 grams. And, and it's that's, amazingly that, That's, that's mesolaire. Now, this is almost, it's almost the sort of cloth that they use for military correct wear yes you you could i mean you could you could go up and down a mountain absolutely you um, could brave a suit out of this yeah you could you, you could. Could, could make a suit out of it but it's incredibly thick 
And it's, but it's not hard when you wear it, is it? Because no, it's not. One would think that, I mean, it, it almost stands up by itself, you know, but I guess it doesn't. No, it's not. It's not very, I mean, it wears very soft. It wears very nice, mm. but uh, mm. you can feel it's very sturdy and it has sort of a brushed finish to it as well. So this is Mercellaire, um, Harris's This is Mercellaire, absolutely. Um, these are mostly, I would recommend mostly for chinos and casual yeah. trousers, but Easy. there are those again who would braid these for, um, for a suit or braid well, this particular cloth for a suit. These are the Askoki cargo pants. So if your hobby is hunting uh, wild game in, in Kenya or Tanzania or somewhere fishing. like that, um, fishing, yes, but it have to be really rugged fishing because this is really incredibly rugged. So if you're want to hike up mountains, um, wrestle wild stallions to the ground or something, these are the trousers that you ought to be wearing to do that. A very good uh, substitute for jeans, <coughs> you know, for denim. Well, for those. It's, I was going to say it's, it's almost denim, in fact. And of course, denim, it's interesting because what does denim mean? Serge Denis. And denim is, in fact, cotton serge. Mm -hmm. And you could say, I suppose, that this twill weave is a kind of cotton surge, isn't it? So, next time you're looking for some really, really powerful cloth for your casual clothes, look no further than Harrison's Mercellaire. Does it come in different colors? It does come in different colors. Um, my favorite, of course, are this sort of dark tan, mm -hmm. a light tan, or what you would call sand color. I have a pair of chinos made out of those, just sort of your office type yep. chino, sort yep. of a light tan. You could throw on a, uh, a blue, light blue button down yep. shirt yep. and a blazer over it. And another color I like for these chinos would be navy. Yes. You know, yes. navy, you wear it with a white shirt and sort of a light jacket. Mm. Um, and and any pair? number of, I do have a navy a uh, pair, pair as well. Here. So for me, those are the three primary colors mm -hmm. for me. Now, you know, they carry any number of colors. Uh, Harrison's does carry any number of colors. But for me, the three primary colors, if you were looking mm. to make chinos out of this, would be this dark tan or yeah. dark oat, um, right. a light tan or sand. Yeah. Uh, some would call it sand and navy. And the, and the navy. Correct. Interesting stuff. Okay. We've got to take a break and we'll be back very, very soon with some more. Welcome back, everybody. We've just been talking about cotton suits and heavy Harrison's Mercellaire fabric for your cotton chinos, cargo pants, and outfitting yourself for safaris and other rugged, highly masculine pastimes. Now let's look at shirts. Now the shirt has sort of taken on a new lease of life in the past few years enormous numbers of companies on the internet selling shirts which you can order online. Um, I think possibly because people don't wear jackets so much. So the shirt suddenly becomes, because it used to be that the shirt was hidden under a jacket and you wouldn't really bother too much about it because you knew that your jacket and maybe your waistcoat were covering it. But with people walking around in shirt sleeves, obviously the shirt becomes a important item in its own right. Let's look at a couple of Askoki's shirts here. This one. Now, this is from Askoki's own line of bespoke shirts. And what do we have here, Oki? Okay. We've got a button down it in... Is, this is a linen cotton blend. This is a linen cotton blend by Carlo Riva. Yes, and it has little little lines. I don't know how best flex. to describe them. Little flecks of white yes. and little blue lines of yeah. flecks going across it horizontally, not uh, not longitudinally. Yeah. Actually, I take that back. This is an Oxford cotton. Uh, I oh. had to take a good look at it. This is Oxford pinpoint cotton. Okay. So all our uh, well, most of our pin, most of our button-down shirts. Uh, we recommend the Oxford Pinpoint Cotton. 
because it's a, a more robust. It's a casual. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. it's a casual shirt. Now you you and reckon so, the button down is a casual? Of course, it's a ah, casual okay. shirt. It, it, okay. It's a, it's a dress down casual shirt. And so the fabric itself reflects the casual nature of the right, shirt itself. Right. Uh, if you looked at, say, for instance, the dress shirts, the button, the, the proper pinpoint dress yes. shirts, they will be done in a finer cotton, mm -hmm. either mm -hmm. sort of a voile. Now, um, what weight would this be? Um, I reckon somewhere around five, six ounces. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Usually shirtings, uh, well, something like this would probably be more like seven ounces because it's slightly right. heavier. Right. But the lighter voiles and the um, hmm. the lighter shirtings are going to be in the sort of four to six ounce range. And you don't prefer these, uh, what you call it? The, the plackets. The plackets on the front. It's or? a matter of taste. Right, I, I okay. prefer, I'm, I'm all about simplicity. Yes, yes. So yes. I like sort of a plain face. Yes. I don't like yes. the uh, the bracketed. Uh, uh, and the same thing with the back. Same with the back. Yeah, uh, yeah, there yeah. are those who prefer the pleats. Well, those are actually functional. Yes. And so, yes. especially if you're buying ready to wear, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the pleats on the back allow the back to expand to right, give you a right. little bit more room in right. the back. However, since all of what we do is essentially bespoke, mm -hmm. or some would say custom, the shirts are tailored. Mm. And so you would have no need uh, for plaquettes since the, no. the shirts are tailored specifically to your uh, unique dimensions. And quite long, you'll notice, um, with these tails, this shirt is worn to be tucked in, I take it. Of course. I yes. mean, there are those who prefer, who like to wear them tucked out. Again, depends on the occasion. And uh, if you're wearing, say, with uh, with a pair of jeans, you know, there are those who sort of prefer mm. a more casual look. Mm. Uh, but were this to be dressed up with a pair of pants, khaki pants, or even dress pants, uh, dress mm. pants, of course you would have them tucked yes. in properly. Yes. yes. And of course you would notice here we have the gussets. Right. You know, as with all our Askoki shirts, these are all hand done. Right, so they won't come apart. You They're see, not going to the come apart. No. The gussets are no. essentially uh, meant to protect the seams from coming mm. uh, from coming apart. Now, when you say hand done, yes. is that, um, I presume there's a little bit of machine work in here. Well, there's a bit of machine work in shirts. They require less hand work than suits, yeah, but they do require hand work nonetheless. Now, if you would grab that shirt, because grab the, if you would grab the blue shirt with a white collar, um, there yep. we could probably see the stitching a little bit more. Okay. They're a bit more visible. Now this is a dress shirt. This is a dress shirt. And this is the vowel material. This that is wow. This you wow. can see. So you can see how fine it yeah, is. Very fine. In yes. comparison, very thin and light. Yes. So this has got to be about four ounces. You can see through it. I can very see you delicate, through it. Yes, very delicate. Very delicate, fine fabric, yes. of course. Uh, and again, this is meant to be worn with your more dressy outfits, with your suits and things of, of that nature. Of now, talking about handwork, you can see the hand stitching ah, yes, yes, here yes. Uh, on the placket. Yes. You can also see the hand stitching here on the, mm -hmm. the armhole, yep. right? The sleeves are attached by hand. Mm -hmm. You can also see hand stitching yes, you right can. across here. Yes. Because and there's so, little tiny... Pleats. You can see, is absolutely. Little creases. So the thing about shirts is, you know, some parts of shirts are straight lines. For instance, the side seams. Mm -hmm. These are straight lines. This is all machine work, yep. right? There is no point in having it hand done. No. Now, the reason, and then certain things like, you know, the cuffs, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, these are attached by, uh, by a machine. Yes. The reason we have these hand done is because this is visible. Right. So right. again, I think it's just a question of art. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with shirts, shirts are very functional. You don't really need any. Um, you can have a completely machine made shirt and it will be fine, yes. frankly. Yes. Yes. Um, you don't really need that much handwork. No, 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 uh, no. But if you insist on it because you're just a connoisseur, then we just sort of use handwork in certain aspects of the shirt just to sort yeah, of yeah. give it that uh, artistic look. And but what from about a functional the... standpoint, as opposed to tailored jackets, yeah, 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 for yeah, instance, yeah, yeah, yeah. tailored jackets, of course, hand tailoring makes a huge difference yes, of course it does. in the way the jacket sits Absolutely. on you. Yes. But with shirts, um, I don't really see that much of a difference no, between no. hand tailored shirts and machine tailored shirts, provided the measurements and the fit are 
on point. Uh, indeed. And, and the buttonholes, are they done by hand? These buttonholes are done, no, they're done by machine. By machine, These yes. These are not done by hand. Well, they're again, as you said, it, it, and this but is But the buttons, to... of course, are stitched yeah, on by hand. They're yes. shanked buttons. Yes, yes. And these are all shanked by hand. And, and anyway, this shirt, for example, will be under a jacket. Certainly. For at least a good part of the day. Certainly. Now, I noticed that the collar is quite high on this. Correct. I don't, the collar stand or something, what do you call that? The, the... Well, it's a, again, it's a matter of preference and a matter of your own idio, your idiosyncrasies, yes, right? Yes, so, yes. I have a long neck and uh, I prefer a taller collar. Right, right. Um, right. I also prefer a longer point collar. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. this is about four inches. Right. And I've uh, taught a number of classes on YouTube uh, and elsewhere about how to determine the length of your point collar. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I find that the uh, best congruence uh, or harmony around this triangle is achieved when your point collar is about the same length as the width of your lapel and the width of your tie. And so for me, that is a rule of thumb that I employ mm. when tailoring my shirts or picking my tie or tailoring my lapels. Yes, yes. I, I, I ensure that they are within, um, I would say, at a minimum, a half inch right, of, right. of one another. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> it's not just the color. You have to get the proportions right. Correct. And this, of course, is an argument for not buying things at random. So when you're walking in the shopping mall with the missus on a Saturday morning, and she says, oh, look at that. You would look splendid in that. You have to think, if I buy it, do I have ties that are the right size for it, depending on what it is? And size of the collar and so forth. Will it go with my jackets? Not just color-wise, texture, um, proportion, so that you get that full effect. Now, I think the interesting thing here is that the full effect is partly subconscious. So people don't notice it if it's right, but they do notice it if it's wrong. Well, if it's right, they notice that they observe that it looks good. They just don't know why oh, okay. it looks good. But what I mean is... It's it, just like the rule of thirds, right? Yeah, Michelangelo's yeah, 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 rule yeah, and yeah, any yeah, other yeah, 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 rules yeah. of art. Uh, when you look an object, at an object, you know, it, you, it, it grabs the attention, it grabs your attention, yes. it grabs the eye. But you can't explain exactly why you find no. it appealing. No, but you, you may not even notice consciously that it looks right, but you will notice when it looks off. And by the way, have you noticed newsreaders on the television, the collars and the shirt and the ties, including the uh, current occupant of number 10 Downing Street? I hate to say this. Look at his shirt collars, his ties and jacket lapels. I'm going to stay out of this one. <laughs> and he should be watching. He should be watching Ask Oki's tutorials on the subject. Um, so the dress shirt made of voile, I think I've pronounced that correctly. This is voile, Very absolutely. fine, very fine material. They call it tela voile, or tela Palo voile. River calls it tela voile. Ah, okay. And then this one, the button down, casual, and the, the texture, you could, you could actually wear this just by itself. You wouldn't need a jacket on it because mm -hmm. it has such an interesting mm -hmm. And texture. of course, now, um, there's linen. This yep. is sort of a pure, what they call lino arsenal. Now let's get these down here because these are quite interesting. That's linen, and the one in the in the okay. bold stripes as well. Okay. The 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 big the bold stripes up there. Now let's look at this one. So this is so this striking is striking color. This is what um, Carlo River calls lino arsenal. And it is linen blended with cotton. Mm -hmm. And one might ask, why would they blend it with cotton? And I don't the, know. And the idea is to stabilize the cloth. Okay. Because linen wrinkles a lot. Yes. Uh, yes. It wrinkles a lot and uh, can look very, very slovenly, mm -hmm. uh, literally five minutes after putting it on. Mm -hmm. And so you blend it with cotton to stabilize the cloth. 
Yeah. Uh, it has, it gives you the airiness of linen or the wicking properties of linen because linen basically wicks moisture mm -hmm. or perspiration. Mm -hmm. So it has that uh, wicking uh, yeah. property, but the linen or the cotton mm -hmm. stabilizes the cloth and yes. keeps it from looking yes. uh, completely Absolutely. rumpled and disheveled five minutes after you put it on. Which, especially if you're wearing the shirt by itself, again, you could wear this, and this is square cut. This you is could what actually we, wear this, this hanging out. This is what we call our, this is a casual shirt. This is what we call our Cooper collar shirt. Right, named after, of course, Gary Cooper. Correct, and yes. some might call it a camp collar shirt. There we are. And we designed this uh, as something one might wear on a weekend. And it's, it's, it's one point about this collar, everybody. Look closely. It's one piece it's of one cloth. Piece. So it's not a separate collar stitched on. Correct. It's one piece of cloth made into a collar. So it's, it's part of the shirt. Absolutely. It comes up like that. And this is something you might wear with shorts on the yep. weekend. Or yep. I prefer to wear these with our Askoki drawstring pants. Oh, our right. Drawstring yes. linen yes. pants. Yes, 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 uh, yes. It's a very uh, yes. elegant, casual yes, weekend yes, yes, look yes. Uh, you might wear to the beach. Yes. Uh, or to the park or just yeah. to lounge around the house. So yes. I have a number of these that I, I pair with our Askoki uh, drawstring yes. linen pants. And you could, in fact, have this as a short sleeved shirt. Absolutely. Um, the, the camp or the Cooper collar you find with um, Hawaiian shirts, for example. Correct. Okay. And it lies flat. You don't have a lot of, it doesn't stick up like a like Correct. a regular collar. I like to wear the collar up. Right. So right. when it's pressed, when it's pressed because it's linen, it sort of tends to sort of stiffen mm -hmm. up. So mm -hmm. I like to wear the collar up and sort of flip the edges down a little right. bit. It's just, to me, it's just a little bit of your own. You have to sort of put your own, a little bit of your own personality into it. Indeed. Now the last two that we have are uh, a fairly standard looking what, Bengal stripe? No, this is what you call sort of, this is a block stripe. A block stripe. Yes. Okay. This is what you and might call is, a block stripe. This is St. Val. This is, this is, yes, this is again, this is another tela voile. Ah, I This see. is a okay. very dressy. There's another one done in linen, but you haven't picked that one. Ah, okay. Uh, there's another block stripe we have done in uh, sort of a dark blue block stripe, but mm -hmm. this particular one is done in, uh, this is cotton. French blue? Uh, well, you might call this a French blue. It's, because it's not is, really navy. Yeah, it's no, not a navy. No, no, no. And this has the point collar, which Oki was talking about. And you'll notice there's a, there's a lot of curve to this collar. Yes. It's not like mine, it's sort of straight. It's, it's got a lot of curve as it curves down. It's Perfect. not a spear point, but it's, and it's got a very high back to it. And then we have this one the same style, the same cut, as it yes. were. Yes. Um, and this is what? This is what you might call a Bengal stripe. Right, right. So it's not quite a pencil stripe because a pencil stripe would be thinner. Uh, this is a Bengal stripe. Mm -hmm. So you have a pencil stripe, which is thinner, and then a hair stripe, which is even thinner. Right, uh, But this right. is what uh, one might refer to as a Bengal stripe, which is a very standard. Yes, it is. Uh, standard um, if you're an office, office shirt, going. Yes, yes, office shirt. Now, it's interesting. What would you suggest? Let's put these back up here. What would you suggest for um, not office, but when you're wearing a suit, would you still suggest something like oh, this? Oh, certainly. Or a plane, maybe? Well, either. It depends on how you're going to wear it. Okay. Um, I wear those all the time with a navy suit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have to, again, you have to look for balance. So uh, the moment you introduce patterns into your clothing, uh, then you have to be a little bit more aware mm -hmm. of how you're going to wear it. So say, for instance, of course, you could pair a pattern shirt with a pattern suit, but mm -hmm. you have to be quite um, savvy. Uh, you have to be. You have to know what you're doing, um, in in order to well not match, but to ensure there's balance between the patterns. Uh, there's an example I give. For instance, if you're going to wear stripes mm -hmm. um, in your shirts, you can wear stripes in your suits, but you must ensure that the skills differ. Right. right. So if you're wearing thin stripes, for instance, yes. like that, then you want to make sure you're wearing broad chalk stripes. 
Interesting. So you can't wear this. Okay. I mean, you could, but if you wore this with thin paint stripes, uh, yes. the scales would clash. Yes. They so would. if you're wearing thin stripes, mm. a thin a striped shirt like this, you want to go for chalk stripes or just a plain suit. Okay. Now, lesson, second lesson of the day then. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. So we've got color. We've got collar, tie, jacket lapel proportions. And we've also now got... Scales. The scales. So as the prof just told us, if I can summarize, very narrow shirt stripes require larger jacket stripes. Correct. Or suit stripes. Or su suit stripes. And obviously, if you've got a bolt... <laughs> don't, don't wear a striped jacket unless it's a, it's a sporting stripe no, indeed, or bolt. Indeed. Indeed. Please then, don't wear, don't, don't, don't buy, a, don't buy a pink stripe or even a chalk stripe jacket. No, and then, it, but if you've got a bold stripe like this block stripe, correct, then you want to have narrow, narrow. You stripes can go with your, thin, on your thin. Suit. Absolutely, you can go with pink stripes, or yeah, yeah, again, yeah, the yeah. safer way to do it would be good to just go with a plain, yes, plain, uh, plain cloth. Now, before we finish, how many shirts? Do you need to have? I mean, not you, because you're sort of in a league of your own. I'm a bit of an anomaly. In terms of, <laughs> of quality and quantity, actually. But for the average guy who needs to look decent, roughly how many shirts are we talking about? Well, if you're an office going person, I would suggest have a rotation of a two week rotation, right. meaning you should ten. have 10 shirts at a minimum. And I think there are a number of tutorials that actually we put up a tutorial last week, just last week yeah, on YouTube okay. on shirts. And so in that tutorial, I recommended that uh, I recommended about 15 shirts. Right. You, right. you know, I mean, you could work with 10, but 15 mm. I recommended. And my recommendation was five white shirts, five blue shirts in various shades of blue, right. starting from sort of very thin blue all the way to sort of more of not French blue, but right, sort of right. a darker blue. And then five striped shirts in right. various types of stripes. So it could be could be light gray, could, could be could be light blue. Correct. Like could be light gray, could be light or could even be like sort these. of light uh, it could even be burgundy stripes. Right, right, right. Um, five striped shirts in various mm -hmm. widths mm -hmm. of stripes. So I think you could get you could get along just well with 10 shirts yes. but i would say if you have the luxury then you know 15 shirts would ensure that you get more longevity mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. your shirts because then you can um you can space them out you could circulate them yes. um, now do easily. you do you have any shirts with separate collars well contrast collars no those i mean are called actually detachable detachable collars. i mean those, those those are no longer uh, common, uh, but they used to be the rigueur back in the day. But you can buy them. I mean, you could buy them, but nobody bothers with them. Ah, okay, they, they served the function back then, Pete, and the function they served back then was that um, today we have washing machines, right? right okay. We have uh, dry cleaners, and just oh. having your shirt cleaned is no big deal. Back then it was because it was all done manually. Yeah. And so back then men wore detachable colors because you could just switch out the color and wear the same shirt mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. after day. Because mm -hmm. the body of the shirt doesn't get ruined really yeah. or doesn't get dirty. Uh, you just pick up dirt on the color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the function of detachable colors was just to preserve the shirt right, okay. and to be able okay. to rotate the colors to extend yeah. the longevity of the shirt and to keep from washing it too often. Okay. Uh, but today we don't have that um, constraint, no, we so don't. to speak. No, no. So uh, it's very rare, uh, unless there are people who just sort of insist on uh, mm. some form of anachronistic tradition and they would like yes. to wear a detachable yes. collar. But other than that, they're entirely um, so it's a, a bit of an eccentricity, but the but the contrasting collars you do have a few. Yes, well, those are called Winchester shirts. Oh, okay. And I wear them specifically as formal shirts, right, so for right. morning dress, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, morning dress, or more, let's say, stroller, something a bit more right, right. formal. 
Uh, there are those who wear them if you walk in banking on Wall Street. It's you know right. considered a little bit more flamboyant, sort of right. the, the Gordon Gecko ah, yes, look. Yes, um, yes. But you know, I find them maybe flamboyant to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. But for a formal occasion, uh, that calls for a little bit of peacockery. Right. So right. Uh, for morning dress, for instance, uh, we have those made in sort of a plain blue yep. with a white collar or Bengal stripes in blue right, right. with a white with a contrast white color, which is the way morning dress ought to be worn. Okay, okay, another another lesson. Most of us don't have any occasion to wear morning dress unless you go to the races, I suppose. Well, if you go to the Ascot, if you go to the Ascot, there's one here held um, every year. That's right in Dubai, and, yes, and of yes. course, one in you know the original one in yes. the UK. Yes, uh, but you know, I think. When it comes to dressing, you create your own occasion to dress yes, as you wish. True. true so true. Uh, you make your own occasion to wear a morning dress. Uh, Interesting. Yes. You, that's if, the way I look at it. If 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 the opportunity arises, then and needless to say, Oki has a full morning dress suit. In case you were wondering. Thank you all very much. We hope you've enjoyed this evening's podcast or today's podcast, depending where you are when you watch this. Keep in mind proportion, texture, color, and the importance of getting the whole thing right, not just the individual components in your wardrobe. And we look forward to seeing you again next month. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Always a pleasure. Most welcome. Thank Most you. welcome.